Hi everybody and welcome to Doctor Who Review. I'm your host Morgan McAvoy and today I'll be talking about episode one, episode two, and episode three of season one of Doctor Who, Space Babies, The Devil's Cord, and Boom. Now, if you haven't seen the episodes, then you might want to stop watching. Because remember, spoilers. Now, before I get into the review, I just wanted to say that if you're wondering why I called this season Season 1 instead of Series 14, it's because it's been announced that Shuti Gatwa's era as the Doctor is going to be a soft reboot of the show. So they're calling it season one instead of series 14. I think it also has something to do with their deal with Disney Plus. I'm not really entirely sure why they decided to do this, but this season is being called season one even though I'm sure there's still going to be fans of Doctor Who that are going to call it Series 14. And that's okay too. So here's my review. I liked that the episode started with the ending of the Christmas special when Ruby first walked onto the TARDIS. And I also liked that the Doctor told Ruby about who he is and where he's from, since that will also help new fans who might be starting the show this season. It was also really sad to see Ruby's reaction when the doctor told her that his home planet Gallifrey was gone. But it was also pretty funny when Ruby was worried about changing history by stepping on a butterfly and the doctor told her that that wouldn't happen, but then it actually did happen and Ruby turned into a creature. But luckily, the doctor was able to turn her back to normal. It made sense that the doctor questioned why he ran when he and Ruby saw the creature on the spacecraft, since like the doctor said, he loves meeting new creatures. It was also a surprise when the Doctor and Ruby realized that the spacecraft they were on was full of babies. And it was really funny when one of the babies, Eric, saw the Doctor and Ruby and called them Mommy and Daddy. It was really sweet when the doctor was bonding with the baby Captain Poppy about how they were both abandoned as babies. I also felt really sorry for the babies when they started crying after the doctor brought up the bogeyman and then kept bringing it up, even though he knew that it scared them. I also thought that Nanny was just a computer system, so I was surprised when it was revealed that she was actually a person named Jocelyn, 
But it was good that the babies had someone to take care of them. I was really worried about Eric when he went to face the bogeyman. And when the doctor and Ruby found Eric's empty stroller, I was thinking that the bogeyman had gotten him. So I was happy when the doctor and Ruby found him. But then I was wondering how the doctor, Ruby, and Eric were going to get away from the bogeyman. But luckily, the other babies showed up and were able to use flamethrowers to scare the bogeyman away. But the doctor wouldn't be the doctor if he didn't find out what the bogeyman was. And it was really gross when he found out that the bogeyman was made when the babies would blow their noses. Even though the bogeyman was scaring the babies, and I understood why Jocelyn wanted to get rid of it, I also understood why the doctor and Ruby wanted to stop her since they realized that the bogeyman was a child of the machine, just like the babies were. And they were able to save the bogeyman and also help the babies go to a new planet. I also understood why the doctor told Ruby that he can never take her to meet her biological mother. But based on the end of the episode, when the doctor is looking up Ruby's DNA, it's clear that we're going to find out where Ruby came from. It was also really nice that the episode ended with the Doctor and Ruby joining Carla and Sherry for Christmas. Jinx Monsoon was the perfect person to play Maestro. And they looked like they were having a lot of fun playing the role. And I also thought it was really creative that Maestro started to play the Doctor Who theme song before the title sequence started. Even though Maestro was defeated at the end of the episode, I'm really hoping they come back somehow because I would love to see Jinx again. It was a good idea when Ruby told the doctor that she wanted to see the Beatles record their first album. But it was really funny to see the doctor and Ruby's reaction when the Beatles started singing about a dog. But after seeing what happened to music, it was clear that something was wrong. So it wasn't a surprise that the doctor and Ruby decided they were going to find out what happened. When the doctor told Ruby about his granddaughter Susan and how he wasn't sure if she was still alive, it was sad, but it also made me wonder if it's possible for Susan to show up again. 
Now, I haven't watched any of the old Doctor Who episodes, so I've never seen an episode with Susan in it, but it would be really nice to see the Doctor reunite with her. And the actress who played Susan, Carol Ann Ford, is still alive. And I've seen articles of her expressing her interest to come back to Doctor Who during the time that Jodie Whittaker was playing the Doctor. So, anything's possible. It was really beautiful when Ruby was playing the piano. And it was nice to see people's happy reactions to it. But that didn't last long since Maestro showed up which caused the Doctor and Ruby to run. I also didn't blame the Doctor when he freaked out since he realized that Maestro was one of the Toymaker's legions and didn't think he would be able to defeat them. It was also really sad when the doctor took Ruby back home and they saw that everything was destroyed, which would be Ruby's future if Maestro wasn't defeated. It was a surprise to find out that the toy maker was Maestro's father, but since the doctor already knew that Maestro was one of the toy maker's legions, it makes sense that they would have some kind of connection. It was also smart of the doctor when he realized that since the right cord brought Maestro into the world, the right cord would also be able to banish them. When Maestro said that he couldn't have been there on the night of Ruby's birth, I was wondering who they were talking about. But it looks like another part of the mystery about where Ruby comes from. I also thought that the music battle between the Doctor and Ruby versus Maestro was pretty creative. And right when it looked like things were not looking good for the Doctor and Ruby, John Lennon and Paul McCartney were able to find the right chord to banish Maestro. I also really loved that the episode ended with a musical number, but the one thing I was a little disappointed about is that there wasn't any connection between Ruby Sunday and the Beatles song, Ruby Tuesday. But maybe they weren't allowed to use any of the Beatles songs. Something that I was surprised stayed a secret until this episode came out is that Verata Sethu who has been confirmed to be playing a new companion in season two, was in this episode as Mundy Flynn. Now, whether or not she'll be playing Mundy in season two, or a completely different character, remains to be seen, but it could go either way. 
I mean, when we first saw Donna, she was in one episode, then the doctor traveled with Martha, and then Donna became the new companion. But this also wouldn't be the first time that an actor has played more than one role in Doctor Who. So I can't wait to see who she's playing in season two. And if her character is a different character, then I'm assuming she'll have some kind of connection to Mundy. Even though it was obvious that the doctor was going to be fine, Shuti Gatwa and Millie Gibson did a great job showing the tension when the doctor was standing on a landmine. You could see the fear that they both had over the doctor's life. But luckily, the doctor was able to use a cylinder containing the body of a dead soldier named John as a counterweight so he could put his foot down. It was also really sad when John's daughter Splice saw the doctor and Ruby and asked them where her dad was because she heard his voice and the doctor and Ruby clearly didn't know how to tell her that her dad was dead and what she heard was a hologram. Even though Mundy told Ruby to shoot her to distract the ambulance, Kanto obviously didn't know that, so it made sense that he shot Ruby since he wanted to protect Mundy. But it was really heartbreaking to see the doctor's reaction. It was also interesting when the ambulance said that Ruby was 3,082 years old and couldn't name her next of kin, which, even though she was dying, made Ruby cry because she doesn't know where she came from and obviously wants to know and also wants to know if anyone from her biological family is still alive. It made sense when the doctor told Mundy that the only way to deactivate the landmine and save Ruby would be if Mundy surrendered because, like the doctor said, unknowingly, Mundy and her people declared war on an empty planet, and they were actually fighting against the algorithm of their own hardware. It was also understandable that Mundy didn't believe the doctor right away, and needed proof, so it was good that the doctor was able to convince the hologram of John to get proof, and even though it looked like John's hologram was deleted, he was able to revive Ruby and deactivate the landmine that the doctor was standing on. I also felt really sorry for Mundy when Kanto was killed after she realized that he loved her. 
I can't wait to find out if Mundy is going to be the new companion in season two or if it'll be a new character. I mean, the doctor did say that he would be checking in on Mundy and Splice, so you never know. But if Mundy is the new companion, then there would have to be some explanation on why she would leave Splice. Since with John dead, Mundy now has to look after her. Unless Splice joins Mundy and is also a new companion, and they're just keeping that a secret until it happens. We'll have to wait until season two to find out. Something that I've seen a lot of people talking about is that an actress named Susan Twist has been playing different characters in each episode and people have been coming up with theories to explain what that could mean. One theory that I've seen is that she's playing the doctor's granddaughter, Susan. And while it would be great to see the doctor and Susan reunite, if that's true, it would also be really unfair to Carol Ann Ford if they recasted her role especially since she's expressed interest in coming back to Doctor Who. We still don't know who the person that grabbed the Toymaker's tooth that the Master's trapped in is, so it's possible that Susan Twist could be playing that character. It looks like we'll just have to wait and see. Thanks for watching, guys! If you saw the episodes, let me know in the comments what you thought about them. And if you want to see any of my previous Doctor Who reviews, check out the playlist. And if you want to see any of my future Doctor Who reviews, or any of my other future videos, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.